This is John T for the Boxing Voice. I'm delighted to be joined by Frank Greaves, head trainer for hot heavyweight prospect David Adelaide. How are you doing, Frank? I'm very good, thank you, John. Good, good. So I I believe you just arrived in the bubble in the hotel. Have you had your tests and that? Yeah, yeah. Just got here a couple of hours ago, all tested and uh, sent away to our room to isolate until we get a positive or negative result back in the morning. Um, So, yeah, it's... uh, probably in the next 15, 16 hours stuck in our rooms. Can't even go out of the room at all? No, we're not allowed to leave the rooms at all. And then even once we get our results back, because the whole country's in lockdown at the moment, the hotel itself is effectively closed. They're just opening up for us. So they're running the skeleton staff. So there's no bar or restaurant open. It's room service only. Um, and we've got to spend the next two or three days literally like in each other's pockets in the rooms. Um We've got, uh, there's a gym in the in the hotel. We've got like an hour slot for the next two days. Um, okay. so literally, yeah, but... At the same time, have they? That'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's probably happened, but no, no, fortunately not, no. Um, but well, yeah, I mean, Netflix? it's just, uh, Yeah, Netflix and sleep, hopefully. Yeah, fair play, cool. Right, well, we'll move straight on if it's all right. So, uh, David Adelaide, hot prospect, as I've mentioned. Uh, he made his debut, I think, last December on a Dubois undercard. He's had three Correct. fights, three wins, three knockouts. Um, and Correct. he's now on TV already twice in the lockdown. So, um, this must be, you must be season pros, you two, then, in the bubble? Yeah, I think we're probably more used to it than anyone else. Um, yeah, they fought on the first show, the first lockdown show on the 10th of July. Uh, so that was before Matchroom did theirs. Frank obviously put the first shows on. Um, so yeah, yeah, we're, we're pretty used to it. Although this seems like it's a little bit more strict than anything we've done before. Um, obviously because the country's now in a national lockdown at, at the same time. Um, so yeah, but it, yeah, it kind of, it just is what it is, mate. You, you, you just have to roll with it and go with it. It's not ideal, but it shouldn't really have that any, any impact on fight night at all, really. Fine. So how's um, training camp gone? Yeah, really well. Um, you know, Dave's, Dave's a good trainer. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really good, to be honest with you. We've had, we've had a nice variety of sparring. Um, had a fair few weeks to get ready. And obviously, as you said, look, this is his third fight since July. So we've, we've pretty much been... I don't, I don't like using the word camp because mm. uh, I think boxing's a, you know, it's a 52-week business. Um but yeah, we've been pretty much on it since since like late March, beginning of April. We've been training together, so yeah, it's been it's been it's been pretty full on. So it sounds like it'll be ready. Now you you mentioned a little bit of training and sparring and stuff. Uh, am I right in saying that he's had the privilege, or both of you have had the privilege of sparring with Anti Joshua and Tyson Fury over recent months? Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. A few weeks ago, we went up and and spent a week up with Joshua. Um, yeah, week up at Sheffield at the EIS. That was that was interesting. Um, and then the, the week after that, there was uh, two weeks up with Fury. Obviously, he's not fighting now, um, which is a shame for him. A shame for us as well because you have kind of got that vested interest in, in seeing them do well. If you've been part of their part of their their sort of build up and their process. Um, but yeah, yeah. So I mean, Dave obviously has sparred with Tyson multiple times before we spent a few weeks over with him in Vegas in preparation for the Wilder 2 fight. Um, so they know each other sort of reasonably well now. They've done a fair few rounds together. Uh, the Joshua Spar, that was the first time they've sparred, but them two sort of, they've met each other on a personal level a few times. I think they've got a few mutual friends. Um, but yeah, mate, it was all good. It was nice to see. I mean, there's differences in the camp, which I won't go into, but it's nice to see how people at that level operate and, and you know, the kind of things that they do. Um, Great experience for both of you and David in particular at an early stage of his career to be fighting, well, arguably the two best um, heavyweights, depending which way you have them out there at the moment. How did he fare? Did he, did he hold his own? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Joshua wanted us back the following week. They wasn't, they wasn't aware that we was going to do the, the Fury sparring, so they wanted to keep us up there. Um, and the same for Fury. Uh, they wanted us to stay there for what, what would have been Dave's last week of sparring. Um, but I wanted us back to London and, you know, let, let's get back, finish off the last week at home. You know, you don't want to be living out of a suitcase for too long if you can help it. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, had it not been for the fact that Dave was fighting this week, we'd have stayed up there for the extra week. But 
um, you know, you've got to concentrate on yourself regardless of who's asking you for sparring. Yeah, definitely. So what do we know about the David's opponent this Saturday? Yeah, Danny Whitaker, he's, uh, he's coming with all-in records. Uh, five fights, four wins, one loss. Um, only lost in, I think, the semi-final of Ultimate Boxer. Um, I can't remember if it was the back end of last year or the beginning of this year, it, but it was certainly, you know, around one of those two times. Um, lost to Nick Webb, got knocked out in the first round. Um, but yeah, he's he's pretty decent. Um, he's going to be coming with ambition, lets his hands go, moves his head quite well. Um, yeah, he's 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 a reasonable opponent. Oh, you know, no 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 disrespect to Danny. He's, he's he's a decent enough fighter, certainly at this stage of the game. Um, oh, and what do we know about David's opponent on Saturday, Frank? Uh, so we've got a guy called Danny Whitaker. Uh, it's got a positive record. Danny's had five fights, uh, four wins, one loss. Only lost in the semi-final of the not the last Ultimate Boxer that was super middleweight. It's the one before they did a heavyweight one somewhere around the turn of the year. Um, beat Jonathan Pilata in the first round. I think Pilata was seven and zero at the time, um, and then lost to Nick Webb in the semi-final. Um, Webb stopped him in the first round, hit him with a right uppercut on the left hook, and, and stopped him. Um, he was on his feet, to be fair. He was on his feet, uh, but the referee waved it off. He's, he's, he's a decent enough fighter. Um, moves his head quite well. Lets his hands go in, in bunches, throws threes and fours. Um, you know, throws hooks to the body, goes to the head, uppercuts. He, he, yeah, he's, he's, he's a decent enough lad, to be fair. Um, as I say, I mean, he's going to be coming with ambition. He's got a winning record. He's, he's beaten, you know, he's beaten a guy with a winning record before in Jonathan Pilata. Um, uh, listen, no, I was in Pilata's corner that night. No, no disrespect to to Pilata here, but for for Danny Whitaker, I mean, I've read a couple of interviews, and you know, I said oh, I've already beaten one of one one guy that bucks on a Warren show. I, and uh, fair play to him, like I say, look, absolutely no disrespect. I I learned my trade in this game mm. on the road with journeymen and whatever else, so I know how tough the game is. Um, more than most, I know how tough the game is. You know, and I know. Some of these kids are some of these kids are spoon fed and you know built up and whatever else. But um, honestly, if Danny Whitaker thinks that Jonathan Pilata and David Adelaide uh, are in any way, shape, or form similar, then he's going to be in for a very, very, very rude awakening on Saturday night. Um, but listen, like I said, look, Danny's a good opponent. He's a great opponent for us at this stage of the game. If if David's as good as I think he is, or has got the potential to be as good as I think he's going to be, um, then realistically we need to deal with the Danny Whitakers of this world. Uh, and, and as I say, that's not I'm not taking him lightly at all. I've got nothing but respect for any man that gets into a ring with a pair of ten ounce gloves on, um, uh, and even more so a seventeen stone man that gets in there with a pair of ten ounce gloves on. Every, every opponent needs to be respected, and I and I certainly respect Danny Whitaker. Yeah, good stuff. Well, uh, hopefully it won't be too hard for him. It is a step up in levels, but that's what he's got to start going through as he starts moving forward, right? Yeah, completely, yeah. I mean, you know, look, as I said, look, I, I've I've spent years on the road with journeymen. Um, so I know the, the value that they bring to the game. But when you're when you're talking about um, you know, you're talking about prospects and, and fighters with the potential of the David Adelaide of this world, then Realistically, you don't need to be fighting too many people that are there purely to survive. Um, you want people that are going to let their hands go, that are going to leave gaps for you to exploit. You want to try and set stuff up. You want to try and draw punches off them. I mean, sometimes with a journeyman, you're standing there and you're, and you're doing stuff to try and get a reaction. Um, and if they're smart journeymen, they're looking at you saying like, nah, I'm not throwing, bruv. You know, it's down to you to, it's down to, you to get through this. Yeah. Whereas this guy on Saturday night, I'm pretty sure he's going to let his hands go. As I say, he's going to come with ambition. He wants to win. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, if he beats David Adelaide on Saturday night, that's a massive scalp for him. Mm. Um, and even looking, you know, looking looking at the British rankings, you, you've got you've got the guys that are up, way up at the top. You know, clearly your Furies, your Joshuas, your Chisoras, your Dillian Whites, and people like that. Then then you've got you've got a little band behind them, the David Prices, the Cash Alleys. Um, that that little section just massively opened up. Obviously, Tom Little's just retired. Um, the uh, Dave Allen's just retired. So literally, like once you get above David Adelaide, 
you've got the likes of Danny Whitaker, Mark Bennett. There's all these guys that are like three and oh, four and oh, five and oh, six and one. Mm. Above them, literally, is Fabio Wardley, and that's it. There's nothing else. So, a win for Danny Whitaker on Saturday night, you know, he puts another win or two together after that, and he's looking at he's looking at the British title potentially. So, it's a big it's a big deal for him. Similar for David, obviously. So, you know, and I know you won't overlook completely. Your I know you won't overlook your opponent, Frank, but rightly so. He heavy favourite, David Adelaide. So, let's say he comes yeah. through that. Where where do you see the next fight maybe going? What kind of level would you be looking at? Your Cash Alleys, your David Prices, your Wardleys? No, not 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 quite, not just yet, not just yet. I mean, look again. Let let's have it right. Uh, David's a three and zero novice. Um, potential is one thing. Doing it in the gym is one thing. You know, he's he's done it in sparring on a regular basis with the likes of Furies and Joshuas. But you've still got to you still got to take your time. Still got to run. You still got to walk before you can run. Um, I mean, look, David obviously is quite a heavily muscled heavyweight. We need to learn to pace ourselves right. We need to learn to develop into a six round fighter before we start thinking about 10 and 12 rounds. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, look, I, I certainly, I don't envisage David being one of these fighters that has 25 fights before he has a real sort of 50, 50 type test or, or go and fight for a title. But yeah, I mean, realistically we need, we need another two or three fights, three or four fights before we start thinking about maybe, you know, English titles, British titles. I mean, the British scene is going to open up massively because clearly Dewar and Joyce, whoever wins at the weekend, is not going to hang on to the British title. They're way beyond that level. Um, clearly, Wardley's going to be in the box seat for that following his result at the weekend. Um, you know, I mean, literally got Wardley, Gorman, and then pretty much below that, there's there's Price and Cash Alley. And, and other than that, there's no one. There, there is then, it then comes in the likes of Adelaide's and the Mark Bennett's and the Josh Sandlands of this world. So, you know, yeah, I mean, literally this time next year, I'd like to be saying, yeah, we're sitting there looking at the British title. Quality. Right. So, look, in my opinion, you're on the biggest card of the year, certainly in this country, uh, uh, Saturday night. So I'm going to press you on a couple of fights. The first one being the main one, which is Daniel Dubois against Joe Joyce. I can't not yep. ask you who, who you think is going to win. Um, I, I know looking at the bookies, the price, I think it's one to four in most bookies for Dubois. But when I speak to all the experts, you guys, and I've interviewed quite a few this week. It's very 50-50 on opinion. What, where, where do you sit with it? Uh, I sit at 51-49 and that sways depending on what side of the bed I get up. Yeah. Um, David sparred with Dubois. He sparred with Joyce, but that was before I was around, so I wasn't present at that spar. Um, Dubois is exceptional at what he does. Um, Joyce, obviously, we know what Joyce does. He's a big, I mean, he's a big, big, big unit. He's a big man, Joe Joyce. Um, I think he's deceptively more awkward than he looks. He certainly looks as though he's a lot easier to tag than what he really is. Um, and certainly, in terms of past opponents, Joyce has had the much tougher, uh, he's had the much tougher tests in the program than Dubois has. But bearing in mind his amateur experience compared to Dubois, that was kind of a given. That was always going to be that way. You know, you're turning pro in your thirties, you're not going to hang around knocking over kids that are, you know, one and five. There's just no point in that. So it was always going to be a sort of fast track thing for, for Joe. Um, but mate, I, you know what, for me, it's, it's a great fight. It's uh yeah, it's a great fight. It is probably as close to a 50, 50 as you're going to get at this stage of the game, because we don't know, everything about Dubois. We've seen what he's like when he's on top. We've seen what he's like when he's intimidating opponents. As I say, what what we've seen him do so far, he's done it exceptionally. Mm. Um, apart from a couple of times, you know, I mean, obviously, when he boxed Larty, uh, he got tagged and we see him get out of shape. We see him trade when he possibly didn't need to trade. So it'll be interesting to see what he's like with someone that is actually getting in there firmly believing that they're going to win. Mm. And that's a whole different mindset. It's a whole different mindset. So going in there and having that belief and knowing that you're better than your opponent when you're boxing AJ Carter or you're boxing even a Nathan Gorman mm. is one thing. Going in there when you're faced with an Olympic silver medalist, a guy that is clearly a well-seasoned, well-schooled amateur, 
um, and, and, and a very good pro so far as well, hasn't lost too many rounds as a pro, that's a whole different mentality. Um, I, I think, I mean, we saw the same kind of thing with Yard and Kovalev last year. Yeah. Um, for the first time in Yard's career, he was faced with an opponent that wasn't faced by him. Mm. And that does something, when you lay down on your bed the night before the fight, that does something in your own mind as well. So it'll be interesting. We're going to find out a lot more about Dubois because I think those questions we already know about Joyce. Uh, we know he's got a great engine. We know he's going to carry on for every, for every second he's in that ring. Be it if he gets if he lasts a round or twelve, he's going to be throwing punches and he's going to be coming forward. It's we're we're going to see Dubois under pressure. We're going to see Dubois hit back with a small gloves on, guaranteed. Um, I, I'm I'm absolutely sure Dubois don't go in there and blast him out. Joyce is too good for that. He's too he's he's too cute for that. And he's definitely harder to hit than people think he is. Mm. So I keep swaying. When when the fight was first made, I fancied Joyce. Then when we went over and sparred, I come away fancying Dubois, and I've gone backwards and forwards three or four times. I, to be honest, I know it's a cliche. I just hope it's a good fight. It, as you say, he's the biggest card. I think it will get a bit of publicity. I, Desperately hope it's a good fight. Yeah, look, really good uh, take on the fight there and analysis from you. Uh, that, and I think that's what makes it great. Nobody wants to sit there and go, 100%, I know that one's going to win in this method because you can't do that. It's too close both ways. Right, so that's the, the big fight of this side of the pond. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are on the other side of the pond. So that, that one's free on BT. So thanks, Frank. You've done all the fans a good one there, uh, as in Frank Warren. But yeah, got 1999, I think, or 1995 for Saturday night uh, in the middle of the night for Tyson Jones Jr. What are your thoughts on that? I, I can't get excited about it, personally. Um, you know, listen, to, to see if, if, even if any of them have got 5% of what they had, then, you know, I'll, I'm certainly going to watch it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I can't I, I can't get excited about it. I really can't. Uh, as much as, you know, I, I was a fan of both back in the day, um, I, I can't get excited about it. I mean, Mike, Mike Tyson's in his 50s. I'm not sure. Jones, if he's not in his 50s, he's got to be touching them. Um, as good as they once were. You know what? It's a young man's sport. And let... let, let let the spotlight fall on some young men, you know? Um, yeah. I, 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 I don't even really know what else to say about it, to be honest with you. I, I'll be the first to say that I will watch it. Yeah. Um, kind of out of morbid curiosity, really. Um, and just because of what both of them have brought to the sport over the years. Uh, but yeah, no, I'd much rather see, give me, you know, Literally, give me, give me Lomachenko, Tia Fing, I love there's any doubt of weight, mate. Yeah, of course. I think the way you've looked at that is the way most people have, and I'm the same. I think, do you know what? Do I want to pay 20 quid for it as a fan? No. Will I? Yes. Do I treat it as the exhibition it is? Enjoy a Mike Tyson min walk, bit of showboating maybe from uh, Jones. Exactly. Duke, and take it for what it is. Uh, but it'll be, it'll be fun for what it lasts. Good yeah, stuff. exactly. I mean, you know what? If we weren't under lockdown and I went down the pub, 20 quids, you know, it's a round or a round and a half a drink. So f f from that angle, you know, yeah, I've got no, I've got no problem paying for it. It's, it's not, no issue. Um, but it's not going to be a boxing match. You, you hit the nail on here when you said it's an exhibition and, that, and that's what it is. Regardless of whether Tyson tries to take his head off, the fact is it's a 250-year-old guy's going at it. You know what? I'm not, from a sporting angle, I'm not, I'm not that fussy about it. Yeah, fair play. Well, look, thanks for taking time out to chat to us, Frank. Really good chat. You're welcome. Um, what we'll do is, right, it sounds like they're relaxing the rules um, with lockdown and the gym's opening. Maybe in the new year when David's thinking about coming out for another one, we'll pop down and see you down the gym if that's all right. No problem at all, mate. You're welcome. Good luck Saturday. Not that you're going to need it. And uh, we'll catch you Thank after. You. Thanks, Frank. Cheers. Nice one, mate. Thank you, John. So if you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, Entitled, Betting Shows, the list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.